Okay, if you're watching this video, you clicked on the help uh, example problem four from either the wet detention uh, worksheet or from the help uh, example problem four on the stormwater harvesting um, worksheet. Um, so first, uh, I'm going to present the example problem or the, st or the problem statement for example problem four. Um, so it's right here on the, on the page. Uh, this is at the end of the user's manual. Um, in the example problem section, and again, this is labeled example problem number four. Uh, the, the, relevant, the relevant information um, for, for the purposes of the model are, are shown here um, in these tables. So here we have the uh, residence time for the wet detention system. Um, the, the size of the project, it's a five and a half acre uh, highway project. The location, um, we are going to be using a littoral zone and achieve a 10% removal credit with that. And our, our goal is net improvement. Um, here we have our, our pre and post development land use conditions. Um, and then down here we have a part B of the problem where we want to achieve an 80% removal efficiency by using harvesting. And then here is our irrigation rate that we're going to use the size of our irrigation area, which uh, doesn't necessarily have to be equal to the area of the, of the project we're looking at. Um, it can actually be, and, and typically is, an adjacent property um, to the actual project location. Um, for, for, the, for Part B, we'll be looking at a BMP analysis as opposed to a net improvement, uh, which we'll be using in Part A. Um, the, the reuse volume and wet detention um, system is 0.733 acre feet. Um, here's our weighted runoff coefficient for the area and our available harvest volume will be two inches over our equivalent impervious area. Okay, so um, first we're going to go into the model. So when you open the model you should see this page first. Um, there's you know various help buttons that, that, are, avail that are available to you. Um, so for you know, some introduction and background on the model itself. Um, we're going to go right into things, so we'll click here to start, uh, which is the button at the top of the screen. Okay, so um, first we're going to go to the general site information page. Um, on here you'll, you'll see uh, many different buttons. Um, the very first one that I want to point out though is the reset input for stormwater treatment analysis. Um, whenever you run the model, you should hit this button first just in case there's any data that is in the model from uh, a previous use. So I'm going to select that now and the model re will reset. <clears throat> okay, uh, so now everything's reset in the model. Um, the first thing that you want to do is enter the name of the project. Um, so for this, we are dealing with example problem number four. Okay. Um, the next thing we want to do is select our meteorological zone. Um, so we're going to go to the zone map. So select the view zone map button. Okay, and here you can see a picture of the state. Um, with the with the five um, meteorological clusters or, 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 or zones for the state of Florida. Um, for this particular um, project, we're we're down in West Palm Beach, which is in zone five. So now uh, we know what zone we're in. We'll go back to the general site information and enter that data. So uh, back in the general site information, um, once you click on the cell for the meteorological zone, uh, that'll bring up this little arrow, so then you can select the drop-down menu. So again, we're in zone five, so select and click on zone five. Uh, next thing we wanna do is select our rainfall. So if we go to the view annual rainfall map here and select this button, Okay, um, again we're down in southwest Florida, so we'll look at the expanded view for um, south uh, region of the state. That's this button right here. Okay, and so that zooms us in on where we're at. And if we look, West Palm's right here. 
Um, and just looking at it, you can see we have the 61 inch line comes right through West Palm. Um, so we'll select 61 inches for this analysis. And then now we'll go back to the general site information and insert that data. Okay, so we'll do 61 inches. And again, the type of analysis that we're going to do is going to be a net improvement. Um, so again, if you select from the drop-down menu, you have three options. That's net improvement, specified removal efficiency, and BMP analysis. Um, for, for this particular problem, we want our post-development conditions to be less than or equal to our pre-development conditions. So we'll select net improvement. Okay, and so when we select net improvement, there is no need to insert a efficiency in these two boxes, so this will just remain blank. All right, so now we know our general site information. Now we're gonna proceed to the watershed characteristics button to input our watershed characteristics. Okay, the first thing we want to do on this page is we want to uh, select our catchment configuration. So um, to look at the, the, the possible catchment configurations available, we can click on this button that says view catchment configuration. So you can see on this page there's 14 different options um, if I scroll to the right, you can see some more there, and we can scroll down a little bit, and there's some more there. Um, for this particular problem, we're dealing with a single catchment, so I'm just going to make note that I'm dealing with A, a single catchment, and then proceed back to the watershed characteristics uh, worksheet. Okay, back at the watershed characteristics worksheet, if I select the gray box, um, next to the select con catchment configuration, the little drop-down arrow appears. So I uh, scroll down and select single catchment. Um, next, I want to input my pre- and post-development land uses. Um, for this project, or for this problem, we're looking at um, highway for both because we're dealing with a highway expansion. So uh, we'll have highway for our pre-development and then we'll have highway for our post development. So the total size of our project is five and a half acres. So I'm gonna put that in for both my pre and post development uh, catchment area. So 5.5. Okay, next we need our uh, pre-development non-DCIA curve number. Um, that's specified as 80. And the pre-development DCIA percentage was specified as 40%. Okay, now our post-development non-DCIA curve number uh, is 80 again. Um, sometimes this curve number value can increase due to uh, site compaction during construction activities. However, since this is uh, an already developed site and we're just doing an expansion, um, that may not occur. So in this instance, the curve number stays the same. Um, next, we're going to input our post-development DCIA percentage, uh, which was specified as 85%. Okay, and then uh, also the estimated area of our BMP. Um, for this, we'll, we'll use a half acre. Now, um, the, the reason that we have this option here for uh, the estimated area of the BMP is due to the fact that the water management districts have, have mandated that your, your BMP for design purposes will not contribute nitrogen or phosphorus. However, it will still generate volume. So we need to account for it volume wise, but um, it doesn't generate any additional nitrogen or phosphorus for us to take care of. Um, also on this sheet, you can look over and see that our pre-development um, and post-development uh, nitrogen and phosphorus annual mass loadings are, are, are shown here. And these are presented in kilograms per year. Right now, uh, or for this example problem, we're using the default concentrations that are hardwired into the program. Um, however, uh, you, you can overwrite these values by simply selecting overwrite default concentrations. Um, select, if you select this and then specify your own pre and post development uh, EMCs for nitrogen and phosphorus, 
that will then um, be input into the, uh, into the model. Um, however, if you do do this, you need to make sure that uh, you, you, you provide sufficient justification to uh, water management districts as to why uh, you did that. Okay, so um, next we're going to um, go to our BMP. So I'm going to select the Go To Stormwater Treatment Analysis button. Okay, so when you get to this page, you'll see a, a picture of the catchment configuration that you've selected. Um, also, it shows your required treatment efficiency for nitrogen and phosphorus. Um, and then you can also see that there's buttons for all of the BMPs that are available um, to use. Um, in addition, there's also a but button for catchment and treatment summary results, which will show you a summary of um, everything you did to the entire watershed. So for this problem, we're dealing with wet detention, so I'm going to select the wet detention button. Okay. So here on the wet detention page, you can see that the, uh, pro uh, the, the, the project description is carried over. So example problem four is shown here. Um, you can see that we can handle up to four catchments. Um, and another thing that's important to note is that if you use a littoral zone in one catchment, you must use it in the other catchments as well. And whatever efficiency credit you're given for in one catchment, uh, the same uh, efficiency credit will be used in all catchments. So for this project, we have a uh, annual residence time of 50 days. Um, we did use a littoral zone, so we'll select yes. And then we also are going to take a 10% credit on that, so we'll select yes here as well. Okay, so um, on here you can see the uh, nitrogen and phosphorus removal that's required um, in these top two boxes and then the nitrogen and phosphorus removal that was achieved in these bottom two boxes. You'll note that the uh, nitrogen removal for or the nitrogen and phosphorus removal is different. Um, it's not the same value and that has to do with how detention systems work. Um, a, 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 an in-depth discussion on this is provided in the help um, section of the wet detention methodologies uh, worksheet of this model. Um, briefly, these, these two lines here um, show the treatment efficiency related to a average annual residence time. Uh, the red line is for nitrogen and the blue line is for phosphorus. What you'll notice is that initially you get a, a lot of treatment in, in a short amount of time and, and then it starts to lag off and you get just a little bit of treatment as time goes on. Um, and this is true for nitrogen and phosphorus. The reason for this is is because th this initial um, treatment is due to settling of particles within the wet detention pond. So uh, th this has consequences because if you use um, wet detention in series with another BMP, such as retention or, or something else, so if something else is, is in front of your wet detention system, um, then you won't get this full credit for treatment efficiency. So you'll get um, a, 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 about 30% less for nitrogen, and you'll get about 55% less for phosphorus, but then the rest of the, and then the, rest of the efficiency you will get. Um, also shown on here is the um, maximum permanent pool depth, um, which, is, which is calculated. And, and, and the reason that this is, is presented is that if you go um, too much deeper than this um, depth, then what will happen is you'll start to get uh, the water will turn over and you'll resuspend um, some sediments and you won't get the efficiency um, that uh, the efficiency credit that is that is shown um, in, in this model. Um, this also shows the minimum permanent pool volume that's required as well. So both of these values are basically guidelines to um, to, uh, to to stay within so that you get uh, treatment efficiencies that are consistent with this model. Okay, so now we want to look at our um, our summary of, of our treatment. So if I go back to the stormwater treatment analysis and then I'm going to select the catchment and treatment summary results button to go to the, to the 
to the summary of our problem. Okay, and on this page, you can see the project titles come through. There's also an area for optional identification, should, want, should it be required. Um, and there's a capacity for four catchments to be examined. Um, for this particular problem, we only are dealing with one catchment, and we, can, we selected a wet detention, and so that shows here. Um, down here, the summary of our performance is shown. So you have a picture of the catchment configuration that was selected, the date of the model run. Also shows your pre and post load um, nit for nitrogen and phosphorus, as well as the target load reduction. Um, and then it also shows the provided efficiency. And then down here at the bottom, it shows your discharge load for nitrogen and phosphorus, with nitrogen being on top. Um, and that's in kilograms per year on the left and pounds per year on the right. And then below that, you have your load removed of nitrogen and phosphorus uh, with your kilograms per year on the left and pounds per year on the right. So it, it, it can be seen that we're achieving more than, than what is required for the net improvement. Now, uh, for part B of this problem, we want to look at um, what would happen if we needed to achieve an 80% um, reduction of both nitrogen and phosphorus? Obviously, we can't get that with wet detention alone. So um, what we can do is we can add another BMP uh, treatment to this option. So what we're going to do is we're going to examine what would happen if we added a stormwater harvesting operation to this uh, treatment system. So what I'm going to do is first I'm going to go to um, general site information because I want to look at a BMP analysis because I'm not looking at that improvement anymore so that's, that, uh, that's irrelevant. So we're going to select BMP analysis and then, um, and then we're going to go to the stormwater treatment analysis button so that we can go to the uh, stormwater harvesting worksheet. <clears throat> Excuse me, worksheet. Okay, so now um, when we get to the general site information page, um, you can see we still have our same configuration that we selected earlier. However, our required uh, treatment efficiency has, has gone to, to be determined. Um, and the reason for that is, is again, we're just analyzing the BMP. Um, I could have selected specified removal efficiency on the, on the uh, general site information page, and then 80% would have shown up here. Um, but just, just, for, uh, to, just to show how this works, we're going to do a BMP analysis here. Um, next, we're going to select stormwater harvesting. So it's this button right here. Okay. And then so again, our, our zone that we selected is carried over here. Um, in the bottom right-hand corner, you can see that we have the um, rev curves for this zone, which is the reuse um, efficiency volume curves. Um, for more information on these, uh, please see the help uh, background for stormwater harvesting. Um, so for this, we're dealing with, one, with a single catchment. So we want to know the total area contributing to the harvesting system. So for this problem, we had five, five and a half acres contributing to the harvesting system. So I'll just input 5.5. Okay. Next, we need to input the total green area available for irrigation. Now, this is typically an adjacent site, and it's not necessarily a part of the, the same site that you're, uh, you're actively working in. Um, so for this problem, we have eight and a half acres that are adjacent to our project that is available for irrigation. So I'm going to insert eight, eight and a half. And then, um, and then also now we need to input our weighted uh, runoff coefficient. And then so for this problem, it was given to us as 0.8. Okay. Now the next thing we need to, we need to select is what are we solving for with this? Um, if you push the drop-down menu, you can see that we can solve for either the harvest efficiency or the harvest rate. So if we know what efficiency we're trying to get, we can solve for what rate would be required to obtain that efficiency. Or if we have a rate, and we can see what efficiency we get based on that rate. So for this one, we're going to select uh, solve for harvest efficiency. Okay. 
And then so now um, we need to insert our available harvest volume. Um, and that was given as 0.733 acre feet. Okay. And then we also need to calculate our harvest rate, um, which was given as 0.86. And note that that's in inches per week um, over the uh, irrigation area. Okay, so now once we in input all of that information, um, it gives us a harvest efficiency um, down here of 80.14%. Um, it also gives us our, our harvest rate of 3,790 uh, cubic feet per day, or um, our harvest rate in inches per day over the EIA of 0.237. Um, and then down here at the very bottom, uh, the model gives us the amount of supplemental water that would be required for the system. So if we have our average yearly demand for harvested water is 10.3 uh, million gallons per year, the average supply of harvested water from our five and a half acres uh, uh, project site is 5.8 uh, million gallons per year. So then we'll need to supply about 4.8 uh, about 4.5 million gallons per year to, to make up the difference there. So now if I go to the stormwater treatment analysis button, okay, and I want to go to see a summary of, of what, um, uh, what my calculations um, did. Okay, so now you'll notice that everything looks the same as before, except now uh, for BMP2, we have stormwater harvesting on here. So um, if we look down, we can see that using wet detention and stormwater harvesting together has actually increased our overall efficiency to 83% for both nitrogen and phosphorus. A common question with, with, with wet detention also is, um, or, or really uh, highway expansion projects in general, is that um, the, the, the catchment itself may not be accurately described by just um, one land use condition. Um, in that instance, what you would want to do is use the overwrite, um, the, the default concentrations um, option on the model and take an area weighted average for the, the, the different types of uh, land uses that exist in the catchment um, and then over and, and make note of the um, TN and TP loadings associated with those um, land uses take an area weighted average and then insert that value into the overwrite default concentrations um, and then